here's Mr. Money must, Mustache, how to retire forever on a fixed chunk of money. Um, so he has, and I'm going to link to this article because I suggest you read it if you want to know more about this stuff because I think, I think a lot of people would trade, you know, a Fukin, if they, if they really knew, if they really knew how this stuff worked, they would trade a nicer car, they would trade eating out every night, they would trade uh, nicer clothes for, for the freedom that actually saving your money early on in your life and putting it to work can do for you. I think a lot of people would make that decision. The thing is, I think it's not really a, it's certainly not a, it's not a well, it's not a well known thing that it's even possible. And a lot of people think, oh no, it's impossible. You have to be super rich to be able to do that. The reality is you don't. Um, uh, if you're super smart with your money, you can, and you start while you're young and you let the magic of compo- compounding interest act for you, uh, uh, you can, can become financially independent. I don't, again, I don't say retire early because, you know, who wants to, if you can retire early necessarily, you want to keep working. You just want to be financially independent so you don't, you're not beholden, um, to money. You don't have to make decisions based on how much money you need to make. So here's the deal. Okay. So, um, so it is absolutely, this is what he says. Again, this is Mr. Money Mustache. So it is absolutely possible, in fact, very easy to make a chunk of money last throughout your lifetime. There is no magic or unusual risk or hope involved. It's just plain math. Even with all the complexities of the modern financial world with its booms and busts, OPEX and Brexits and the churning sea of changing politicians and dictators, it still all boils down to a really simple number. And we can illustrate it with this really simple example. So let's say you want to be able to spend $40,000 per year for life and have that spending allowance continue to grow with inflation, and you never want to make another dollar from work in your lifetime. In this situation, the following three sentences represent the entire universe of probability for you. So remember, so if you want to just be able to spend 40000 per year in your life, again, this isn't a $40,000 a year salary. This is having $40,000 to spend. Um, now, that's like on the order of uh, a fifty-five, maybe $60,000 salary or something like that, because um, this is this is assuming post-tax, right? This is $40,000 in your checking account, every year so um, that you can spend so here's what that looks like here's he, he lies out the three the three um three possibilities for you so if you if you retire with eight hundred thousand dollars in investments you will probably make it through your whole life without running out of money that's a five percent withdrawal rate so so that means you're withdrawing five percent of your money um to spend forty thousand a year with withdrawing five percent uh, of your money uh, a year if you start with a million dollar nest egg that's a uh you will very likely never run out of money. If you start with 1.33 million chunk, that's a 3% withdrawal rate to be able to spend 40,000 a year. Um, it is overwhelmingly certain that you'll have a growing surplus for life. Now, these statements do all depend on the context- continued existence of, product- of a productive human race, which continues to innovate and trade and do not detro- destroy its own productive capacity. But you know what? In the event of a global apocalypse, you won't be thanking yourself for spending those last few years in the office c- accumulating a few last shares of index funds anyway. It's safer than relying on any job. So having a fat nest egg, it's safer than relying on any job because keeping a steady job depends on the overall economy remaining healthy enough to feed your company, your company remaining solvent, and you you remaining productive and useful to that company. Meanwhile, a good investment portfolio just depends on the world economy in general continuing continuing to exist. So there's this thing called the, 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 the safe withdrawal rule, SWR. Um, uh, and it typically... Uh, it basically what lines out. You can you can look it up. It basically says that if you if you have a chunk of money and you want it to last your entire life, you don't. And and he says you could even do a five percent withdrawal rate and you'll probably be okay. But four percent is like that. That's one of the that's one of the rules. So again, if you're spending forty thousand a year, if you're gonna if you can keep your expenses for forty thousand a year, you just need a million dollars to live off of. Um, and if and that's a four percent uh, withdrawal rate. So the magic of the four percent withdrawal rate is this. It's if you withdraw no more than 4% a year from a fixed amount of money, you will never run out of money because the money will, it will keep growing with the, with the rate of, uh, uh, with the stock market in the world economy, it'll keep going up. So, and that includes, even if you're selling, that includes, and uh, this isn't, some of this is, this has been back tested and you shouldn't ba- just back test a strategy to see if it works out. Cause you know, you never know what's going to fucking happen, but some truly, truly crazy events would have to happen for this, uh, for you to not be able to live off a million dollars, assuming you're spending forty thousand a year, I think that would be a four percent withdrawal rate. So here's the thing: um, this includes even if you're selling when the markets are down. So I, I think a lot of people right now, uh, again, they think, "Fukin, oh, like I'm uh, if anyone retiring now is absolutely screwed." Well, if you're only withdrawing four uh, percent or withdrawing X percent of your money, which you probably will, maybe, maybe expenses right now it's uh and you're you're retired you're having to spend uh uh you're having to withdraw more than four percent 
that's that's not the end of the world because the market is going to go back up, right? So you're going to sell at rock bottom prices right now. But ideally, um, I mean, not ideally, uh, based on you know based on how this shit works, the market will go up and you will then be able to lower your withdrawal rate. So it's it's kind of an interesting thing. I think a lot of people don't think of, and I'll, I'll link to this. I'll link to this article and I'll link to a. Uh, uh, I have a post on No Gradient where I talk. I have like nine steps to follow. This isn't snake oil shit. I'm just reading what the experts are saying. I'm just reading what uh, reading what the pros are saying. And this isn't some snake oil shit. I seriously consider this is like the single number one thing I wish I could just shake every human and tell them, um, uh, and say if you are very diligent with your money. Now I'm not saying you don't even need a you don't need a six figure salary for this. Well, you do need to do two very important things that make this uh, uh, make this a hell of a lot easier. Start as early as possible. Start when you're young. And number two, be very diligent uh, with saving your money. So starting early and being diligent uh, will be fucking huge. Okay, so um, uh, here, yeah. So here's we go. So most people get stuck on these three questions: What investments do I use? Uh, do I use to provide a lifetime of income? Um, okay, so a big chunk of my savings. So this is what generally what my uh, what people might say at the when they when they get to the when they get to thinking about uh, their retirement so a huge a big chunk of my savings are in a 401k or pension locked up until I'm 59 how do i retire at 35 another question how can i pay for us health insurance on a 3 $3300 per month budget when i've heard monthly premiums can exceed 1200 per month for a family of four the great news is that there are easy answers for okay so i didn't do all three of these uh yeah all three of these questions but they're just not widely known because true early retirement with no backup income is such a rare field that very few people write about. So let's bang out those answers right here. As always, I suggest that you need one thing, a generous bucket load of low fee index funds. It can even be a single index fund if you want to keep it even simpler. Vanguard's VTI, Total Stock Market Exchange Traded Fund. Whether you own these funds through your company's 401k plan or your brokerage account of your choice or a Vanguard account or through an automatic management service like Betterment, uh, which I also recommend, uh, uh, as I do, doesn't matter. What matters is that you are buying pieces of real profitable companies which pay dividends and appreciate over time. Okay, so the uh, a big thing here is low fee, uh, low fee index based investing. Don't try to don't 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 give your money to someone that's going to charge you high fees and who can uh, fleece you on those fees and um, uh, try to beat the market. Just do low fee, uh, low fee index based uh, investing. Look it up; it's legit. Okay, so let's just say, just walk through this. Okay, let's just say you're 35 years old. You've saved exactly one million dollars, and you've handed in your resignation. At this point, you probably have at least now a million dollars. That's a lot of fucking money. I'm not. I'm not saying this is a lot. Ooh, try to keep my voice down. <laughs> oh yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're all good. I love it. I just dropped the f bomb, and she's wondering if her kids are being too loud. No, 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 they're all good. Okay. Um. Uh. So yes. Maybe you don't uh, save a million dollars by the time you're 35. Maybe you save a million by the time you're 45. Maybe it's probably the time you're 50. Um, my whole point is that you don't just need to work till you're 65, and uh, especially a job you don't like, and wait wait till you retire. You if you if you start early, you can you can get on this get on this early, and uh, you can be financially independent sooner. You just really got to think you got to think about it now, and you got to think think about how to how to fucking spend your money, um, how you're going to spend your money. Okay. So at this point, you will probably have two. So you've just quit your job. You're 35. You have a million in the bank. And if you don't have, if you're not 35, call it 45, but this is just walking you through it. At this point, you will probably have at least two chunks of money, a normal chunk, also known as a taxable account and a retirement chunk, perhaps a 401k, IRA, or pension, right? Now that, that money in the latter group, you can't fucking uh, spend till you're older. Well, you say, I don't have access to that money. So what can I do? Well, you can access the money in your taxable account. So here's the deal. So let's suppose it's, this is what he says. Let's suppose it's divvied up. 500k in a taxable account, Vanguard Betterment uh, checking savings. That's money you can access right now, whenever, penalty free. Then there's 500k in retirement accounts between 401k, IRA, pension, etc. On your first day of freedom, you log in your account, find an option of what to do with dividends, and set those those to get automatically deposited in your checking account. So, dividends you get paid for owning stock. That's that's the companies distributing money to shareholders. So right now, the VTI fund happens to pay 1.89% annual dividend, which means that. That the five hundred thousand dollar account in that uh, in the 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 taxable uh, your taxable account will pay nine thousand annual dividends straight to you. So rather than reinvest those dividends, you're now drawing down. So you want to just uh, uncheck the uh, have those dividends automatically invest in your checking account. Okay. Then if you're shooting for forty thousand of annual spending, simply set up an automatic monthly withdrawal of an additional thirty one thousand per year. So that's twenty five two thousand five hundred eighty three per month to be sent to your checking account, which is to, which is set to automatically pay off your credit card, which used to buy your groceries. Okay. So 
That's the magic of early. Okay, so he says, but won't I run out of money if I do this? That's the magic of early retirement math. The answer is nope, because check out how this plays out. Because of those withdrawals, your account will lose a few shares every year. But because of natural stock market growth, your account will be fighting back and each share will be worth a bit more. Thus, your money lasts much longer than it would even if you were just keeping it all in a checking account or stuffed in your mattress. So a quick spread- spreadsheet simulation of this drawdown reveals that your account survives almost 23 years, at which point you are 58 years old almost eligible for penalty-free withdrawal of your true retirement money. So again, penalty-free withdrawal means you don't you don't have to pay, uh, um, well, you do have to pay uh, income. Um, if, well, so this is where we're kind of getting into nitty-gritty. I don't want to get too much into the nitty-gritty here, but we'll say if you do a Roth contribution to like an IRA or a Roth contribution to 401k, when you withdraw, that money's already taxed. Anytime you see the word Roth, all it means is the money's already taxed. When you put that money in the account, when you withdraw it, you don't have to pay taxes on it. It's a, it's a, it's a magical thing. Um, uh, so, um, okay. So, but, but during this whole time, that other 500,000 in your retirement account grew untouched and untaxed, and it's now worth $1.2 million, even after accounting for future inflation. In other words, you have way more than enough to live on forever at this point. Heck, even if you are stuck with $1 million, a $1 million house occupying a huge part of your net worth, you can convert that into livable money, sell the house, put the cash into index funds, and use the resulting cash stream to rent a spiffy but reasonably priced house or apartment in the lovely walkable area of your choice. If you're stuck in the world's most expensive medical care market like I am, the most profitable investment of all may be salads, bikes, and barbells because these virtually eliminate the lifestyle diseases that trigger about 75% of U.S. healthcare spending. But even so, most people choose to insure against surprise medical bills and people with existing medical needs depend on help with those costs. Um, so he goes into some of the healthcare stuff. I'm not going to cover some of the... He got you know he just talks about he going on healthcare.gov to get a low... you know. To, to find healthcare and to show that it's actually not that expensive. You can shop around. Um, I mean, health insurance is expensive, um, but he, he was just given some specific examples that he was able to find in his market of Colorado. So I'm not going to go too much into those details. But okay, he also says stock market crashes are never permanent. In the long run, the market always goes up. So all that happens during a crash is that those few shares that you do sell during those brief times when the market is down will hurt your account balance just a bit more. Within a year or two, the market is back up and your remaining stocks are more valuable than ever. If you want even further reassurance, you could just choose to spend a bit less during this time. As for your cost of living going up faster than inflation, it rarely happens. And if it does, you can adjust by spending less in other areas. Most things are in your control, especially if you take a big picture view. You can shop around, move, and alter your lifestyle in a million different ways. And in fact, this is really good for you. So this is another thing. I think people talk about uh, you know, uh, financial independence, retiring early. If you, if you, if you have a million dollars in the bank at 35, you're, you're, you're probably not going to get in a situation where you're never earning another dollar. You could take a, you could, you could take a job, like a dream job that you, now you don't care about the money. You can now work at that job. Uh, uh, maybe you want to work at Fukin, like a trampoline place and like one of those sky high places, And that's your dream job. Boom. Great. You, you can make money that way. You know, you can make money. You can now choose what you want to make money from. You can start your own business. Granted, you can't invest a shit ton in it if you want to you know, be on the safe side, but you can also Fukin you know, do a million different things um, and still get paid uh, and still get paid. So you can, this is assuming you don't want to make $1 um, to live off a, fi- uh, a fixed chunk of money, which the reality is you will be fucking, uh, uh, you're, you're probably, you're going to want to work. Probably you're going to want to do something um, and, get, and, and get paid for it. even it's a little side thing, make an Etsy account. I don't know, figure it out. Okay. So, um, uh, as it, for your cost of living, um, let's see, you can shop. Okay, so standard retirement advice is based on protecting people from any form of hardship or change, which is completely counterproductive. In the right quantity, these are the backbone of a good life and the fuel for personal growth. Without them, you will melt into a whining puddle in front of a television that endlessly blares Fox News. Hilarious. Every financial advisor, even Betterment, seems to suggest loss of seems to suggest lots of bonds. Why does why does Mr. Money Mustache only hold stocks? So this is why I say he only holds stocks. This is what he says. The quick answer is that stocks earn more money on average, especially right now in 2018. So this is a uh, uh, what Jack brought up last on the show. Is like, is it even worth it to hold bonds? So this is what Mr. Money Mustache says. Especially right now in 2018 with bond yields so low. Sure, stocks are more volatile, but volatility only bothers fearful, pe- fearful people who look at the stock market every day and fret when it jumps around. As a mustachian, you can do this. Mustachian is what he calls like his cult following. I guess I'm a mustachian. Lower stock prices are simply a temporary sale on stocks. For example, in the story above, I assume $40,000 annual spending rate, which is way more than almost anyone really needs to live well here in the U.S., especially once your kids are growing. I completely ignored Social Security. Again, 
Yeah, that's assuming the government's not giving you any money, which will benefit most people at a level between $1,000 and $2,500 per month for a big portion of their older years. I ignored any incidental, incidental income or inher inheritances or profits you might make on selling your house someday, and the list goes on. So that's lying in the sand. Although I personally think working hard almost every day after your retirement is good for you, it also is completely optional, and you don't have to earn, mo earn any money at it if you don't want to. A chunk of money is a perfectly good retirement plan, and the math doesn't care if you're retiring at five years old or 85. If you get the numbers right, you're set for life. So I think a lot of people, yeah, they, they just don't think that way. They think it's impossible. They only, um, uh, uh, so I, I encourage you. I thought that was good to share, especially during these times. Just relax, think about it. I'll post that in the show notes. Really think about how you, how, how you spend your money. And, and I think what, what happens is when you, when you shift your thinking on how you spend your money, what happens is when you realize the power of compounding interest and the power of investing your money and saving it and how it grows, it all of a sudden that 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 fucking twenty dollar cocktail that you're fucking buying every day when you were going out, or that fucking nice those, those nice clothes you're always buying, or that nice car, all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm, I just bought a fucking fucking fifty thousand dollar car, or forty thousand, hell, even a thirty thousand dollar car. You buy a used ten thousand dollar car. What are we talking about? People it does the same shit. It's got AC. And it takes you where, where you need to go and a heater. That's all you fucking need, okay? Um, so I think if you think about it that way, um, it really shifts. It really shifts your perspective on money uh, uh, because the power, yeah, the, the, the you 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 save your money right. You invest it properly, especially at a young age. A little a little a uh, little tidbit here. If you start saving, let's see. If you save, I forget the numbers off the top of my head. It's in the it's in the post. But if you basically save a thousand dollars a month between the ages of twenty five and thirty five, excuse me. Let's start with 35 to 45. If you save it, if you start saving when you're 35, if you start saving $1,000 a month between the ages of 35 and 45, so it's, that's that's 12,000, that's 12,000 a year um, uh, uh, between the ages of 35 and 45. By the time you are 65, that money will grow into 750,000, assuming a 7% growth rate. 750,000 you will make uh, by the time you're 65 if you save from 35 to 45. Now, if you save from 25 to 35 and save $1,000 a month, it's the same amount of money saved. Again, 12000 a year over a 10-year period, 25 to 35. If you wait, again, if you do it, start 25 instead of 35. By the time you're 65, instead of 750000 it will be worth $1.5 assuming about a 7% growth rate. Now, that's insane. What does that mean? You've contributed the same amount of money. All you've done is you shifted that. You started saving 10 years earlier, and now you have twice as much money. It's absolutely insane. The power of compounding interest is absolutely insane. The sooner you start, the fucking better. Okay.